Hello everybody, and welcome back to the SolidCam introductory series. In this video, we're going to cover how to set up a new milling cam part. Now because SolidCam is fully integrated into SolidWorks, the first thing we have to do is get our parts into SolidWorks. Now you can do this a couple of ways. You can either directly model the parts in SolidWorks itself, like we've done here, or you can import the models via a step file, an STL, or some other CAD format. Now because we are fully associative and fully integrated, there are a lot of benefits you have by doing the modeling directly in SolidWorks, so that's going to be our recommendation whenever you have the opportunity. To start our new cam part, we're going to go up to the toolbar here where it says solid cam part. We'll click on new, and in this case we're going to create a new milling cam part. But obviously if you're using a different technology like turning or mill turn, you'd select the appropriate drop down here. Now the first thing that solid cam is going to ask us is whether we'd like to create this as an internal or an external cam part. Now we're going to cover in greater detail all the distinctions between these two methods in a totally separate video, but we are going to touch on some of the high notes in this video. The key distinction here is going to be where we're actually physically storing all of our cam data. If we choose internal, what SolidCam is going to do is it's going to bake all of our cam project directly into this SolidWorks part file or assembly file. That means that at the end of the day, after all of our cam programming is finished, we'll still have just that one single .sldprt or .sldasm part file. Now this can have a bunch of benefits, the main one being that you only have one file that you need to pass around. So if you're working in an environment where you have some type of vault or PDM system, you're only managing that one single part file. Now there are some drawbacks to this as well. The main one being that because it's all in that one file, anyone who touches that CAD model in any way, it's going to be seen by everybody. So if you as the programmer have to go in and maybe delete some chamfers or get rid of some fillets on the part, everyone is going to see those changes in that single part file, including your design engineer who maybe has that model set a particular way based off of your CAD best practices. As an alternative, what we can do is an external CAM part. And what this is going to do is create a totally separate part file, either .prt or .prz, that is a SolidCam specific part file. And what SolidCam is going to do in this case is actually create a new SolidWorks assembly file where it will associatively copy in all of the model geometry that's in this original SolidWorks part file into this new SolidWorks assembly. Now the key thing here is that that is a one-way associativity. So if your design engineer makes any changes to the original SolidWorks file, that will get trickled down and carried into the new solid cam file as well, so that you'll be able to see any changes your design team happens to make. But because it's one direction, any changes on the manufacturing side that your manufacturing engineer or your programmer make will not travel back upstream to the original design model. This means that you're free to modify the model in any way you see fit, and it's not going to disrupt what the original design engineer had for that model. Generally speaking, you're going to have a little more flexibility if you do external cam parts, so typically that's what we recommend, and that's what we're going to go with here. Now by default, SolidCam is going to name this new external file just whatever your original design file's name is, and if you happen to already have an external cam part modeled after this part, we'll simply add a dash 1 to that extension. Now the defaults for the directory of where we're actually going to save that external cam part file is going to be defined in your settings that we covered in a previous video. But obviously if you'd like, you can override this by clicking browse and navigate to wherever you'd like to put that part file. And likewise, you can pretty quickly just tick this little box right here where it will default to put the new cam part file in the same folder as your original part file here. And lastly, our units, metric or inch, are also set up in that original settings file, but we can change these to be whatever we'd like for this particular cam part. Once you're happy, just click the green check mark and we'll proceed along. Now before we dive into the setup of the actual cam part, I just want to show what SolidCam has done in the background here. We've created a new SolidWorks assembly file, and within that file we've added all of the original solid bodies and CAD data from that original part file in what's called the design model right here. So we can see if I look at my solid bodies, I have both my original part and the stock that I had happened to model all saved within this design model right here. We also add a separate model called CAM, and this is where we can add any additional features or functionality we'd like to add into this model. Now because this is a full SolidWorks assembly, we have all of our mates and alignments tools that we can use, so if you wanted to add some fixturing or some collision avoidance objects that you'd like to have in your model, you can do so here. Now the first thing that SolidCam is going to ask for is what machine is this for? And essentially we're selecting our post processor here. In this case, we're going to go with a Gmailing Haas 3X, and this is actually going to define what toolpaths we're going to be able to put on this particular part. If this were a 5-axis post-processor, then we'd be able to do 5-axis operations. In this case, because we've done 3-axis, we're only going to be limited to our 3-axis operation types. The next thing that SolidCam is going to ask for us is our coordinate system. Now internally within SolidCam, we're going to refer to these as our MAC coordinate systems. But on your actual control, you're going to see these as your work offsets, your G54, G55. By default, we're going to start the numbering at 1, and we can increment up from there. So if you have Mac 1, Mac 2, or Mac 3, on your controller, that's going to be your G54, G55, and G56, respectively. Now the position is going to be an index off of that original coordinate system, 
for something like five axis work. So it's still gonna be that same origin, but just a different rotational position around that coordinate system. This again is used mostly in five axis work, so we're not gonna cover it in this particular module. Now we have a number of different ways to define our coordinate system here. You can see that some of them are listed as associative and others are not, and this is an important distinction here. SolidCam has full associativity to the actual CAD model that's within SolidWorks. That means that if at any point you go in and you make a physical change to the model, as long as we don't completely break associativity there, we can update all of our toolpaths, all of our coordinate systems to match, and all of that will just trickle down and update automatically. Now, an important note here, only some of our options for our coordinate systems maintain that associativity. So keep that in mind when you're choosing which one to use. The select associative face and the by three points associative will both maintain that associativity, while the other operations will not. So if you do go in and you end up changing your CAD model to some degree, all of these will permanently fix that coordinate system in space, and you would have to go back and manually reassign its location relative to that new CAD model. Whereas associative face and by three points associative will automatically update for you if you'd like it to. For select associative face, the first thing we're gonna do is grab some face in our model. It can be on the part itself, it can be on a stock body, doesn't really matter. In this case, we'll choose the top of our actual part itself. And what SolidCam is going to do is draw a bounding box around that part. So if we zoom in here, we can see that it's actually drawn in these sketch lines here that form a bounding box in contact with our part. And it's gonna also go in and add some points at all of the vertices and all the midpoints of these lines, as well as the midpoints of all the faces. This first selection down here is gonna choose where it's gonna assign our coordinate system based off of all of those options. So for example, we can say top corner of model box, and we'll shift that coordinate system to the top corner of that projected boundary box. Now, if the default orientation of our coordinate system still isn't quite right for you, you can always go in and change that at any point by scrolling down here to modify by rotation or modify by delta, and you can shift both the orientation of your coordinate system as well as the position. So for example, we could rotate about the z-axis, maybe 90 degrees, and we can see that our coordinate system has followed accordingly, or we can shift the entire coordinate system off in a linear fashion as well. So let's move it, say, one inch in the z-axis, or x-axis. And we can see that it moves along in that x-axis. Now, an important note here, these movements are relative to our coordinate system and not to the SolidWorks coordinate system. So you can see our x-axis is pointing this direction, whereas the global coordinate system for SolidWorks is pointing in a completely different direction. At this point, all of our operations are gonna be dependent purely on our Mac and not on our SOLIDWORKS coordinate system. Now let's look at some of our other options. Select face is gonna work in functionally the exact same way. The only difference here is that it's not going to be associatively linked. So all the same operations apply, except it's not going to dynamically update if we were to change the CAD model. This next option, define, is gonna work a little bit differently. Here we're gonna actually choose where we'd like to physically place that origin. So in this case, let's say I'm gonna have it on one of the corners of my stock model right here. So I'll click this vertex, and this is gonna be the center of my origin. The next thing it's gonna ask for is to pick a point or line that's in the positive X direction. So in this case, I'll move over here, click this point, and it's automatically assigned my X axis. And then lastly, it's gonna ask for my Y direction, in which case I'll put right here. Just those two is enough to initially assume and define our Z axis and fully define our coordinate system. But just like before, if anything assumed here is incorrect, we can always reorient our coordinate system to be wherever we need it to be. The next option of select coordinate system is less frequently used, but still a nice tool to have. This will actually look at the SolidWorks model to see if you've actually modeled any coordinate systems natively in SolidWorks. If we had, we'd have them listed as a drop down here, and we could simply select one of them to use as our default coordinate system. Now, normal to current view is gonna be much more common for five axis work. So if there's a particular angle of attack that I'd like to have for a particular operation, I can simply orient my view here to wherever makes sense and go to my normal to current view and capture current view. Here we can see that it's gonna set our tool axis, our Z axis, to be staring directly into my screen. And if we weren't around, we can see that that matched my exact view orientation. And obviously if we need to, we can tweak and modify that's position as well. And lastly, we have by three points associative. Again, this is associative, so it will keep up and maintain that associativity if we make any changes to our CAD model down the line. And this is gonna work very similarly to define, except it's only gonna allow us to select points instead of edges. This could be very useful if you're dealing with a faceted STL model, for example, where you may not have any good straight edges, and you can simply use your points to pick along. So again, we select our initial origin first, we select another point in our positive X direction, another point in our positive Y direction, and then from there, SolidCam is going to assume our positive Z axis. Now in this case, I'm just gonna use select associative face because I like keeping and maintaining that associativity. And I'd actually like to do it not based off of my part, but off of the stock that I have modeled here. So when I select my face, I'm gonna be sure to select the face of the actual stock and not the part. 
Now in this case, I'd actually like my origin to be on the top, so I'll switch to top corner of model box. And that looks good enough for now. So we'll click the green check mark. And if we'd like, we can go in and start editing things like our safety and clearance planes for all of our tool levels, but for now we'll leave these at the default. Select the green check mark again. And we have our coordinate system fully defined. The next thing we can define for SolidCam is what our stock is. And we have a number of different ways to define this just based off of whatever works best for your workflow. The first option we have here is by box. And this is gonna just create a box right in our view pane right here. And we have a couple of ways we can do this. We can do it relative to the current model. We can do it in absolute coordinates, or we can define a stock size. Now, if we do relative to the current model, we'll have to tell it which model this needs to be relative to. In this case, I'll just select our part file here. And you can see it shows up in the selection menu. Now from here, we can use our expand box at and simply define the dimensions of this box. Now again, this is relative to the bounding box that it's placed around the part that I've selected. So you can see that currently it's gone tangent to the edges of my box and it's added 100 thou all the way around. Now, if we wanted to, we could always expand this. So let's say in my negative Z, I actually wanna have half an inch instead of a quarter inch. And we can see it extends that stock even further down. And just a little useful tip to take note of, you'll see down here we have the option to add box to CAD model and create 3D model. What these will do is it will take this little ghost outline that we have here in green that simulates our stock, and we'll turn that into actual CAD geometry within this particular CAM part so that we can reference that for future operations. My next option is to define my stock in absolute coordinates. So in this case, instead of using the part as the origin, it's actually gonna look at my Mac 1, and it's gonna center my stock around that part by default. From there, I simply define the amount of stock in positive X, negative X, positive Y, etc., until I've defined my stock the way I'd like to. So in this case, it's just kind of splitting it evenly all the way around, but in reality, my positive X, for example, should be closer to say 10 inches, and my negative X would be closer to say zero, because I'm right on the edge of my stock. And again, you can play with this until you get it to line up exactly where you need it. Our last option, called stock size, is kind of a hybrid between the other two methods. We're essentially gonna define what the actual size of our stock piece is, and then we're gonna define where it is relative to our actual selected body. So in this case, for my selection, I'm gonna select my part. It's gonna automatically assume a stock size, but maybe we have a slightly larger piece of stock. Maybe it's, say, 10 inches in X. And we can see that right now it's maintaining a relationship where it's centered on that original part model. That's defined down here in the offset from target. But if we wanted to, we could always manually offset this as well. So maybe I want it to be a little bit lower in Z, say minus 0.1. And we can see that it updates and drops the stock accordingly. Our next option is a little more niche for how we can define our stock, but can be useful if you're dealing with, say, a laser cut or a water jet blank for your parts. This is called extruded boundary. And essentially what we'll do is we'll define an external perimeter for our part. And SolidCam is just going to extrude this some distance to define our, stock tar our initial stock. So if we select the outer profile of our part here, say that yes, we would like to use this whole profile. And if we click on show, we'll see a little preview of what this model looks like. Again, not as common, but it can be very useful in the right situations. Our next option is gonna be 3D model. And this can be very useful if you've already modeled your stock directly into the CAD part itself. In this case, you can see the outline of a stock model we've already defined here. So I can simply select that. And that'll define our stock as that body itself, which again, because it's dynamically linked, means that we can update this part later on and everything will update accordingly. The next option is gonna be really a turning specific. This is gonna be cylinder, and it's gonna work the same way as box, except now it's gonna make a radially symmetric cylinder instead of a box around our part. And lastly, we have STL. So if you happen to be importing your stock model either from a prior operation that you exported that uh, kind of mid-stage manufacturing model, or if you have an STL file from some other package, you can simply select that STL as your stock as well. In this case, because we went through the trouble of actually modeling the stock inside CAD itself, that's what we're gonna use. So we'll simply change to 3D model, and we'll select our stock body. Click the green check mark. And at this point, our part is fully defined. If we scroll down to the bottom here, you'll see our iMachining settings. Now we've gone over iMachining in much more detail in a separate video, so I'll direct you there. But this is where you define your machine database as well as your material database for this particular setup. From here, we can click the green check mark. And our initial part setup is complete. From here, we can start adding operations to our part. Or if we ever need to, we can simply go back into our CAM part definition and edit anything in here that needs changing. And that's going to cover our new milling cam part setup video. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to the help information in the description of this video, or leave a question directly on this video as a comment. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.